Hi, you guys. It's Shanna here at Humboldt Rabbit State Park. And today we're going to be doing a junior ranger program about fossils. As you can see, I've brought some real fossils with me. We're also going to be talking about the golden age of redwoods and reptiles. We're going to be talking about dinosaurs, but other reptiles as well. And we're going to talk about some history of California here because we're in the California State Parks. So to start with, I wanted to welcome you guys to the Junior Ranger program and let you know it's gonna be about a half hour. And at the end, we'll take the Junior Ranger pledge like we do every week. Hi, everybody. Welcome and let's get started. So to start off with, we're gonna talk about the four types of fossils. There are four types of fossils. The first one is gonna be a mold fossil, which is anything that left itself fossilized and made a mold of it. It looks like the actual animal, but the tissues and bones have been replaced with minerals, so it's a rock. Over here is a mold fossil. Then we have an imprint fossil. An imprint fossil is when the thing that's fossilized leaves an imprint. This is how we know what dinosaur skin looks like. This right here is an imprint of a clamshell. Another type of fossil is a trace fossil. A trace fossil could be something such as a dinosaur footprint, or it could be something such as this. Can you guys see this? This right here is called coprolite. It's actually fossilized dinosaur poo. So I'm not holding dinosaur poo in my hand because it's a rock that's replaced the dinosaur poo, but it's a trace fossil of dinosaur poo. And the fourth kind of fossil is amber. Amber is fossilized tree sap. Amber is a very special kind of fossil. In amber, we can find insects, amphibians, reptiles, and even sometimes small birds and spiders. The amazing thing about amber is it preserves all the structures and whatever the animal was doing at the moment. It also has the real color of the animal in it. And so that can teach us a lot. Really, really ornate structures such as feathers are very, very hard to keep in fossils, but in amber, they'll sometimes survive. So those are our four kinds of fossils. Now let's talk about redwoods and reptiles. We're here at Humboldt Redwood State Park, and it's been redwoods in the entire northern hemisphere of the world for about 350 million years. Redwoods used to grow throughout North America and Europe and Asia, but now they only survive just along the northwest coast of California up into Southern Oregon is where the coastal redwoods go, right into Central California where the giant sequoias grow, and then a small inland valley in China where the dawn redwoods grow. Now we have redwoods here, and redwoods haven't changed hardly at all in those 350 million years. For example, this right here is a little redwood seed cone, and the redwood seed cone is virtually unchanged in 350 million years. I've seen a picture of a fossilized redwood seed cone, and it still had the same basic structure and the same basic size. For that reason, we sometimes call redwoods living fossils. There are some other kinds of plants that are also living fossils. I'll let you guys think about some while we go on with the program, and then we'll talk about them more later, see if you get them right. Now let's talk about time. We're gonna take a quick travel through time. Are you guys ready? Come along with me, let's go back 600 million years ago, and then we'll go forward together through time to now. Now, 600 million years ago, the entire earth was covered by water and not very much lived on the planet. If we come forward to about 600 or 580 million years ago, we get to the edge of the Cambrian period. And that's when we start seeing things like trilobites. Trilobites were called that because they actually have three sections of their body and they live underwater and 
They're kind of like pill bugs under the water. All of their bones were on the outside and they had a hard skeleton. In the Cambrian period, we also have jellyfish and we have clams, lots of different kinds of clams. Now, the thing that's amazing is that most things that lived in the Cambrian period did not have any head or eyes or ears like the jellyfish or the clams, but trilobites did. We go forward to about 500 million years ago. That puts us in the Ordovician period. That's when we start thing, seeing things like coral and starfish. Again, not very many things have heads at this time period. Coral are actually an animal that lives attached to a skeleton under the sea. And what we think of as the coral is actually the skeleton that kind of anchors the animal in place. And then at the very ends are the animals that actually kind of stand on their head and pull food in their mouth. Kind of like a starfish does. Then we go forward in time to the Silurian period. The Silurian period is about 430 million years ago. In the Silurian period, we see sea scorpions. Sea scorpions have their bones on the outside. They can be a little bit scary looking and they were huge. Another thing we have in that time period is lampreys. Lampreys still live nowadays in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Now, if you look, those lampreys do indeed have teeth like a vampire. That is because they attach to their host and suck blood. When they live in the river, such as the Ill River, which is actually named for them, they do not suck any blood. They suck blood when they're in the ocean on things such as sharks and whales. But when they come back up to the Ill River, they don't eat any again, so you don't have to worry about being eaten by a lamprey. Now we go forward to the Devonian period, which is about 420 million years ago, and that's when we start seeing some insects. The silverfish insect is the most primitive of all insects. You can tell it's an insect because it has six legs, jointed antennas, all of its bones are on the outside. It also has these wonderful bristly tails. Now, the other thing we have during the Devonian period is we get Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus may look like a fish, but Dunkleosteus has all of its bones on the outside, a hard armor plating. And those bones that look like teeth were actually just armor plates that used to grind together. Even its pupils were giant bones. So that's Dunkleosteus. He's going to swim back over here to the Devonian period. If we go forward from 400 million years ago to about 360, we have the Carboniferous. In the Carboniferous period, we start getting my favorite type of insect, the dragonfly. Dragonflies are true insects, but they're so primitive that they actually cannot fold their wings but you start seeing more specialization and wing formation. We also have tree ferns. Tree ferns are just exactly that. They're really tall ferns that look like trees. And we start getting our first animals that come up on land that look a little dinosaur-like. We get amphibians. Amphibians live part of their life in the water and part of their life on land. And they do have very soft skin that needs to stay moist, so they need to stay near the rivers. Well, we're going to come forward just a little bit more to the Permian. At, between the Carboniferous and the Permian period, we have the end of the Paleozoic period. And that's when a giant meteor came and struck the Earth and caused a whole bunch of disruption, and a lot of animals died out. But then when we move forward into the Permian period, we have animals starting to recover. In the Permian period, we get our first animals that look really like dinosaurs that have harder skin and can walk on land a lot. We start getting crocodiles. And we also get Demetrodon. Demetrodon is a very primitive dinosaur. But the wonderful thing about Demetrodon is that Demetrodon 
has its legs going down underneath of it. So while crocodile's legs spread out and they are belly draggers, Dimetrodon is able to hold its belly up off the ground. And because of these hip bones that put the legs straight underneath of it, just like our bones, Dimetrodon is a wonderful example of a primitive dinosaur. Let's go forward in time a little more. We leave the Paleozoic far behind and travel forward into the Triassic. In the Triassic period, we start getting Stegosaurus. When I was in about third grade, Stegosaurus was one of my favorite dinosaurs. What's your favorite dinosaur? This right here is another incredible creature that lived then. This is Tanystrophius. You can see this long neck. It is believed that Tanystrophius would hide in shallow streams and use its long neck to be able to come up out of the water and then sneak back in and attack fish. What did the fish look like? Maybe like Ichthyosaur. Ichthyosaur looks like a dolphin, but is actually a swimming reptile. So let's go forward in time even more, a little closer to now when the humans live. Now we're going to talk about a time that many people are fond of, the Jurassic period. Everybody thinks they know about the Jurassic period because we all watch Jurassic Park to kill out dinosaurs. But let me tell you a secret. They lied in Jurassic Park. There was no Triceratops in the Jurassic. There was no Tyrannosaurus rex in the Jurassic. They didn't come along until later. Shh, we know better. Okay, so this right here is when the redwood trees start to come out. This is also when we get sauropod long necks in the Jurassic. And swimming in the waters is a very fearsome bunch of creatures. We have mosasaurs. Mosasaurs are quite long. Now, this right here is a big toy for a reason. We have, during the Jurassic, swimming around, Liopluridon. Liopluridon was 83 feet long. And you wonder what Liopluridon ate? Liopluridon ate anything it wanted to that lived in the Jurassic. And if you remember in Jurassic World, if you saw it, Liopluridon, who's who comes up and eats the T-Rex. The only thing wrong with that, they didn't live at the same time. But now you know. Now let's go forward in time to about 150 million years ago. That is called the Cretaceous period. In the Cretaceous period, well, let's just say it's Cretaceous Park. We've got Triceratops and our other guest, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Roar. And flying overhead, we get not a dinosaur, technically a flying reptile. Flying reptiles are not considered dinosaurs, but we start to get our pterodons. So that's what we would find in the Cretaceous period. And then we're gonna go forward even further in time. We're going forward, we get to the end of the Mesozoic. And at the end of the Mesozoic, there is another giant catastrophe. We get a giant asteroid hitting the Earth, volcanic eruptions, much of the plant life dies, lots of stuff does not survive. And leaving the Paleozoic, we find that unfortunately, many of our dinosaur friends have died. But they leave us the fossils to remember them by. Going forward from that, we get into the Paleocene. And when we enter the Paleocene, we start to find giant birds. Now, these are not just any birds. Birds may not sound scary to you, but these are called terror birds for a reason. At over 12 feet tall, big meat-eating terror birds ruled the earth. I wouldn't want to meet one of these things. We're going to go forward even further from the Paleocene into the Eocene. 
And in the Eocene, it's 50 million years ago, we see crabs. Crabs have their bones on the outside. They're very developed. They live both in land and in the sea. Cute little crabs coming up living land. We also see owls. Owls are the first of the really familiar birds. And then we see this. This is what the horse looks like in the Eocene. This animal does not look like our horse that we know at all. It's only about a foot tall, about the size of a baby deer. And this animal with its little three pointed hoof is very tiny and gentle. You wouldn't ride it. So that's called the dawn horse. And that's in the Eocene period. Let's go forward even further in time, getting even closer to now. And we got the Oblacene. In the Oblacene, we have cats and dogs, primitive cats and dogs. But we also have Entelodont. Entelodont, well, this is the dog, but Entelodont is a giant, ferocious pig. And Entelodont was over 10 feet tall. I have seen one of these stuffed, and these things are scary, and they definitely eat meat. I would not want to meet an Entelodont. We're going to go forward even further into the Miocene. In the Miocene, we have the saber toothed tiger. And the saber-toothed tiger is joined by one of my personal favorites. The saber-toothed tiger is joined by dun, 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 Megalodon, the most fearsome shark to ever come into the world. Megalodon was over 53 feet. This right here is a human down here. This is a great white shark. This is a whale shark. And this is the two different sizes that are possible for Megalodon. 53 feet is almost as big as two large school buses. Now Megalodon's skeleton is made out of cartilage. So it doesn't fossilize very well. But this is Megalodon's jaw six and a half feet wide. Megalodon weighed 43 tons and was a very beefy boy. Now that's pretty recent to our time. And you may be familiar with Megalodon, but as we move forward just a little bit further, we start to get into the Pliocene with giant sloths and camels and woolly rhinoceroses. And then we'll move forward even further and we'll come into the, the Pleistocene. The Pleistocene had giant deer and woolly mammoths. History is so amazing. All the different kinds of creatures that have evolved. And now we move forward into the modern day. We're very grateful that we still have redwood trees. We have the redwood trees. And we have lots of animals that we now recognize running around the park. And we can go camping. Now, in the Redwood Forest, I said we would come back to a discussion about different animals and plants that hadn't changed. And we did talk about the silverfish and the dragonfly. But I also wanted to mention we have ferns here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. And ferns are very primitive plants. They don't even produce seed. They only produce spores. Ferns haven't changed through millions of years. And the same thing with the horsetail plants. You can go traveling through time and see things that you recognize for millions of years, but lots of crazy different things too. So I want to show you guys a few things. Now, First of all, sometimes you think you find a fossil and you get all excited, but you actually find out it's just a sedimentary rock. So I wanted to show you guys, this is a rock that's made of just a lot of things. 
pressed together through time, lots of little rocks and debris. This is the exact same thing with seashells stuck in it. So this right here is actually a sedimentary rock with fossils in it. Sometimes it gets confusing and you always hope you find fossils, but you have to make sure sometimes. So if you like going fossil hunting, make sure you pay attention to whether or not you have a fossil. Seems pretty obvious. Now we're going to talk about something that makes me a little bit sad. We're here at Humboldt Redwood State Park and we're underneath the redwood trees. And a lot of people want to know what dinosaurs walked under the redwood trees. Well, in other places in the United States, dinosaurs walked under the redwood trees. But here in California, we were underwater in the Jurassic period. If you look right here, you'll see that there is actually no California in the Jurassic period, 152 million years ago. And if we go forward to the Cretaceous period, there's still, here's the Rocky Mountains, and there's no California. We're still underwater. So no dinosaurs walked here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. But what they did do was marine reptiles swam. You remember I was telling you about Liopleurodon and Mosasaurs and Elasmosaurs and Kentrosaurs and Ichthyosaurs, all those giant swimming reptiles, they were here at Humboldt Redwood State Park. Then later on when California, because the tectonic plates shift and earthquakes and things, and California was able to lift up out of the ocean and wrinkle into mountains and be above the sea. When that happened and the plate slipped and California came up, then the redwood trees were able to survive here during the ice age. And so even though we didn't have dinosaurs walking here, we still find a lot of interesting marine fossils here. So I wanted to show you guys some fossils that were found in this area. This right here is actually a piece of petrified redwood bark. It looks almost exactly the same as if I'd gone and gotten it off a tree right now. The only thing is you can see the individual fibers, but they don't come apart. Redwood bark fossils are really amazing. They still have the red color from all the tannins of the redwood. And then you guys remember, I was telling you we mostly find marine fossils here. Here is a fossil of a fish. You can see it's hardly changed at all. It's clearly a fish. Here are some clam shells. These are fossils that were found in Humboldt County. And here is what you find along the beach now if you go out to Humboldt Bay. Here are two more fossils of another kind of clam. You can see clearly that they're fossils. And then this right here is the one I found a couple months ago, right on Humboldt Bay. These, again, are considered living fossils because they haven't changed hardly at all through time. Here is a couple of snail shells. This one is a fossil. This one is a fossil. This one is the modern day one and you can see that they've hardly changed at all. They just are rock hard when they're fossils, but you can see all the details. Just to give you an idea of one more kind, you can see the distinct ridges on this clam shell right here that's a fossil. And here's another one that's clearly a fossil. And here's the modern day one. They look so much alike. It's really amazing. Now here is an ammonite fossil. And you can see its spirally snail shell form right there. This had an animal that lived inside of it that looked a lot like a squid or an octopus. And then this right here, 
is actually mosasaur teeth. I don't know if you can see, but here's the jawbone. There we go, that's a little bit better lighting. And there's the teeth. Now teeth stay almost exactly the same when they fossilize. And the last fossil I'm gonna show you guys today is from Megalodon. This right here is half of a Megalodon tooth. Now Megalodon had a wonderfully sharp tooth. This edge right here is still incredibly sharp and you can see where it would be in the gum line. That's half of the tooth. So the tooth was quite large and very sharp and spiky. Megalodon, as I said before, was 53 feet long and weighed up to 43 tons. Megalodon. You know what? I think it's time to sing a song. Would you guys like to sing a song with me? I have a song about Megalodon. If you'd like to help me sing, you can do your part when it comes along. Your part's gonna be chomp chomp. Are you ready? Oh, I wish I was a little Megalodon. Chomp chomp. Wait, Megalodons aren't small. Let's do big. I wish I was a giant Megalodon. Chomp chomp. Oh, I wish I was a giant Megalodon. Chomp chomp. Cause I'd swim wherever I likes and I'd bite with teeth like spikes. Oh, I wish I was a giant Megalodon. Chomp, chomp. Good job, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed learning some information about fossils and dinosaurs and traveling through time with me. Now, I'm gonna help you guys all do the Junior Ranger Pledge because you guys have just learned a lot about nature and California history. But first, I have a question. Does anybody know what the California state fossil is? The California state fossil is actually, I'll give you a hint, its other name is Smilodon. The California state fossil is the saber-toothed tiger. So, I thought you guys might enjoy knowing that. It's time to do the Junior Ranger Pledge. If you want to join me, just go ahead and put up your right hand and repeat after me. We're going to start off with I and you say your name. So repeat after me. I, Shanna, promise to treat the earth and all living things with care and respect and to be thoughtful about what I do and how it affects others and to learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. Good job, you guys. You're all junior rangers. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you guys next Thursday at 1130.